We're now on uh, section four of uh, sympathetic division of the autonomic ner nervous system uh, for chapter 15 of anatomy and physiology. And learning objectives for which you should have understanding uh, after completing this section include giving the location of the sympathetic preganglionic neuron cell bodies, describe the left and right sympathetic trunks and ganglia, compare and contrast white and gray Rami regarding their location and composition, explain the differences between the sympathetic trunk ganglia and the prevertebral ganglia, ganglia and describe the four pathways of sympathetic neurons and compare and contrast which general effector organs are innervated by each pathway. So with sympathetic division, uh, you should certainly know that the sympathetic function for your exam is involved with exercise and emergency active activity, fight or flight, get going. Uh, it involves a thoracolumbar anatomical origin area. Uh, the ganglia are close to the CNS, or always close to the spinal cord, right? Uh, but anatomical pathways are complex. For the sympathetic, sympathetic, excuse me, preganglionic neurons, can't say it too fast, uh, cell bodies are housed in lateral horns of uh, T1 to L2. The myelinated, myelinated axons course through the anterior roots of T1 to L2 spinal nerves and they branch off. Those sympathetic trunks in the ganglia are on the left and right trunks, the just lateral to the, the vertebral column. You should know those things generally for the exam. Uh, the trunk resembles a purple necklace. Uh, it's a string of composed composed of axons, and the pearls are composed of the sympathetic trunk, ganglia, housing, and cell bodies. Pretty much all that information in that slide should know for the exam. Uh, with the sympathetic trunks and the ganglia, there's generally one ganglion uh, associated with each spinal nerve, uh, but the cervical portion of the trunk has only three ganglia, the superior, the middle, and the inferior. Uh, the superior cervical ganglion cells have postganglionic axons going to the head, the neck, and the thoracic viscera. Uh, the targets include the sweat glands, the blood vessels, dilator pupil pupillae, or pupillae, or pupillae. Uh, muscle of the eye, uh, superior tarsal muscle of the eyelid, the middle and inferior cervical ganglion cells have postganglionic axons that innervate the thoracic viscera. And this view here, and you will have uh, an exam question for the final exam, will have some of this content for this overview of the uh, sympathetic pathways. I zoom in here uh, from the standpoint of noting, generally speaking, of course, this being our spinal cord, and there we have uh, basically our superior cervical ganglion, middle cervical ganglion, inferior cervical ganglion, be equivalent to the C-spine C here, cervical spine. And then we show, of course, T1, thoracic, all the way down to T12. Uh, and then we have a lumbar L1 to L5 and S1, S2 for the sacral uh, area. And we have these here. We have the postganglionic axons, the skin, the blood vessels here at T8. Okay. Uh, then we go up here. And we've got here, basically, in our cervical, our, our cervical area, we've got up to our eye and our blood vessels and our salivary glands. I'm sorry, going from the T, above that T1 there. And then uh, we also have our blood vessels and our heart uh, from our cardiac and pulmonary plexuses. You will not be quite, uh, tested on the plexuses specifically. Uh, that said, you uh, should know that get this general uh, greater thoracic splanchic nerve here innervates areas going to our stomach, our spleen, our adrenal medulla, our kidney, our ureter, uh, our pancreas, uh, and that said, if it also liver and gallbladder here as well. And then we have our lesser thoracic splanchic nerve, uh, the superior mesenteric ganglion here. Uh, that is going to be going, of course, more to here, more to the small intestines and, and to the large intestines to some degree. Make sure I didn't get you, Stu, you're wrong here for the really should be more of the lesser thoracic splanchic nerve here coming through, uh, come up here more for the kidney, okay? Whereas it's more for the, uh, uh, for the adrenal medulla, uh, of course, for the greater thoracic splanchic nerve. But you can see that from the image. If I somehow say it too quickly, you can see it here for yourself. But you should know this in general. And studying it pretty well, and I, I may be uh, misremembering, so to speak. Uh, I know that there's some content from this particular diagram on your exam, but you should know this in general to be able to identify it again with the multiple choice given to you, knowing where they go, right? Uh, and here we have our lumbar splanchnic nerves uh, coming here from L1, L2 region, and to the inferior mesenteric ganglion coming to our rectum here. Uh, and to our intestines. And then we have our uh, lumbar splanchnic nerves here. I'm sorry, our sacral splanchnic nerves here uh, going out to our, uh, our hypogastric plexus uh, and involving our bladder and our ureter, or the ureter and the bladder. And then uh, the hypogastric plexus here also leads to the vas deferens, seminal vesicle, prostate, and the testes for the reproductive organs, uh, including also the ovary, the uterus, and the vagina. Okay. And then, of course, there are sympathetic trunk ganglia below here. A sympathetic trunk 
Uh, you should definitely know more, probably more for lab, but will not be specifically covered more at this, at this time. You won't have that diagram on your exam, but you should know that general composition, generally speaking. Uh, for the organization anatomy of the sympathetic division, uh, we have the white and gray Rami, they connect the spinal nerve to the sympathetic trunk, the white Rami, uh, communicantes carry the myelinated preganglionic ganglionic sympathetic axons from T1 to L2, they have the entrance ramps to our trunk, the gray Rami communicantes carry unmyelinated, right? That's why they're gray and not white. Postganglionic sympathetic axons from the trunk to all the spinal nerves. The exit ramps are, or they, they are the exit ramps from the trunk. And um, for the short term here, I'm not going to cover the sp sympathetic splanctic nerves and the prevertebral ganglia. It's just too much content. Neither am I going to uh, go over the celiac ganglia or the superior mesenteric ganglia. So you can see you're spared from that for your exam or the inferior mesenteric ganglia. All good information, but just not for right now. Uh, same with Horner syndrome. I'm going to pass over that for now. Uh, more for application, uh, more as we end A&P into next semester and, of course, beyond. Uh, as far as the sympathetic pathways, the axons exit the sympathetic trunk by one of four pathways, our spinal nerve pathway. You should know the names of the pathways. You're not going to have to know uh, all the different uh aspects to each of these pathways for your exam. You will have, I believe, however, this spinal nerve pathway, you will have an exam question here noting, uh, be able to note, identify obviously the anterior root, the posterior root ganglia, and the posterior root, and the lateral horn right off the side, uh, go to the white ramus or the gray ramus, ramus uh, and the posterior ramus here protruding out here, or the anterior ramus there, right? And the sympathetic trunk ganglion versus the sympathetic trunk not specifically erector pili and the sweat glands, that was a, but uh, well, actually you will from a standpoint of uh, going from other units for the final, right? Not so much this unit specifically for those other 60 questions that are on your exam. And again, know in general, the post-sympathetic, uh, post-ganglionic sympathetic nerve pathway is one of those sympathetic pathways, but not the specifics of it here. You don't, you're not gonna have that diagram or the spline sync nerve pathway no, it exists. No, it's a pathway, but not all the, not all the intimate, de int intricate details, or as well of the adrenal medulla pathway. Okay. For what you learn, the difference to, what's the difference between the sympathetic trunk ganglia and pre prevertebral ganglia? You should know that generally for sure. Uh, what are the structural and functional differences between the white and gray Rami communicantes? Uh, how do the spinal nerve and splanchnic nerve sympathetic pathways differ regarding both the pathway and the organs innervated? Important for long term. That part's not going to be on the exam. Same with the last objective, which is important to know long term, but not for now. Uh, in what ways does the adrenal medulla pathway help prolong the effects of the sympathetic stimul stimulation? And that's section 15.4, and we'll come back here shortly. With 15.6, we're actually not going to cover the autonomic plexuses in the enteric nervous system at this time. The enteric nervous system will get more of a focus point second semester with 247, and we'll actually prefer more autonomic plexuses more uh, potentially at that time too.